What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, we're working in Studio One version 4.1 Professional today, and I wanted to take a moment to show you guys something that I literally just found out, and I've been using this DAW since around 2014. So, it has to do with tempo maps. Now, since we got some of the new improvements in version 4.1 with manual tempo mapping. I got to admit, I've been doing a lot of workflow tests and trying to incorporate it into my workflow. And I realized something that was really, really cool. And first of all, I just want to point out that this is completely separate to Melodyne or any integration that we have with Melodyne. This is entirely within Studio One. So let's take a listen to this track. This is the same example of a session that I used a while back when we were talking about the tempo ramp stuff. If I solo this track out, we have tempo information over here of 69 BPM. Now I've gone ahead and I've added some arbitrary tempo adjustments over here. So you can see this moves up to 72, then we move up to 74, 77, this jumps up to 80, and we're back down 75, 72, 68, et cetera, et cetera. So if we have this track set to time stretch, which we do, then that means that these tempo changes that we adjusted, this audio will follow suit. So if we have a quick listen to this, you'll hear these tempo changes. All right, so you get the picture. It's essentially following, and that's because we know the basic BPM of this file. All right, so now if I take a look at this same file over here, and we have a new tempo map that we've added. If I was to go ahead and bounce this file, we've created a brand new file. Now you'll notice that the file tempo information has changed to map. Now some of you may have seen this before and you may have wondered what this means. This essentially means that the file is a tempo map. Now the thing about a file that has tempo map metadata embedded in it is if you were to change the BPM to a static BPM, this would still follow. But check this out. If I was to, for example, take this and let's just option drag it over here. And I was to go ahead and change this from time stretch to don't follow. Have a look at this over here. We are no longer see this audio file that's snapping to bars, but we still see that we have this map. Now watch what happens if I drag this into the tempo track in Studio One. You'll notice that the embedded tempo map is very easy to add in Studio One. So now if I was to go ahead and play this, this audio file would make perfect sense against this tempo. So you can see that those speed changes are happening. Okay, so that's one aspect to look at. And this is within the same song, but let's say that you exported a file that had a tempo map and you used a drag and drop export to drop that via the browser. I'm just gonna do a straight WAV file over here. So now if we were to go ahead here in this song and I was to drag this file into the timeline, let's go ahead and drag it in over here. This is set to time stretch by default. So you see that this is snapping to that time stretch. Let's go ahead and turn this to don't follow and you'll see that it will resize itself. But it's the same principle if I take this audio event over here and I drag it up, you can see that we're able to extract the tempo map from that audio event in any song. And as long as we know that there's a tempo map in there, that's a really easy and quick way to be able to do this. Personally, I'm going to be honest with you. I knew that we could do this with Melodyne files, but for some reason, I thought that we absolutely needed the MIDI information that came from Melodyne to do this. I did not realize until recently that this is something that we can do natively within Studio One. Now, another thing to mention here is that as long as we have this map and as long as you have your song settings that allow stretch audio files to song tempo, then this is all gonna work quite seamlessly in the background. Even if you're using loops that were created that have different tempo maps, maybe they were manually tempo mapped or maybe you created your own tempo and you recorded, as long as they're bounced against that tempo map and they retain that map information, you've got a really easy way that you can get that tempo map extracted to your tempo track in Studio One simply by dragging and dropping onto the tempo track. Now, one thing I want to point out about this really, really quickly, let's go ahead and let's take both of these files off. And in fact, let's try to revert back all the way to the beginning here before we bounced this file. Okay, so this, this section right over here. 
If you happen to do something that you do some type of exponential curve, so for example, let's say that I go ahead and we use some of the new functions in Studio 1.4 where we can add these ramps. In a previous video, I had a look at how these ramps affected the audio and how they are displayed when they're rendered. So if I was to go ahead and bounce and render this file, now you can see that this map has been embedded. If I was to take this and we could, for example, drag it along, if I was to do the same thing here, I want you to keep in mind what I mentioned in a previous video, that behind the scenes, this is essentially a staircase of really small incremental tempo changes. So when I do that, have a look at what happens. It's got the same basic shape that this one did, but behind the scenes, we actually have a bunch of little different tempo changes that are occurring. So it works, but it's more, uh, let's call them course adjustments. And this would be the exact same as if we exported a MIDI file and opened it up in a third-party DAW. Anyways, don't really need to go any further into it than that. Anytime that you have a tempo map that's been embedded into an audio file, we can extract that really easy in Studio One. So I hope you guys got something from this. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, share. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.